hosts. You got your hosts. You got your hosts. One and two. Who's on the one, Liz? J Lo. I knew you was gonna pull the hat out. I do. If you're not, if you're not on YouTube, you missed it. It was the reveal. <laughs> you was the reveal. Liz secretly with the J Lo with the extra hat just bust out her. Uh, she been waiting to wear this Janet Jackson slash J Lo hat, and I just been waiting for. Her. But anywho, it was a request. It was a request by our our allegedly guest here. Allegedly, allegedly. If you're not watching YouTube, you don't know it's a third person here. You won't know. But you got to keep listening if you listen to the podcast. But I'm Shara. Uh, of course, we are the aunts of inclusion. Welcome to the More Than Words podcast. Listen to. Today, we got an episode for you, and we we don't got a lot of time for it, but we're going to get straight into our auntie moment because our guest here is on camera, and we want to keep him on camera so we can make him nervous the way he keeps us going. On, you'll know. I, I'm not giving too much, but this you'll person know. knows. Sarah's going to introduce him. Yeah, Sarah's yeah. Don't think. So I did, let's just a reminder of what an auntie moment is. It's basically anything audacious, brave, things that we're currently going through, trends or common themes that we see within our clients, information, and we just want to have a chit chat about it. Today's auntie moment, I did think about it today. And it has a little bit to do with our prior episodes on the nine trends for the future of work. And it's specifically on upskilling. <laughs> So let me start with my story. I'm scared. Why are you always scared of my stories? Because how you go from J-Lo to the block and then you turn the <laughs> parent conference voice on? Could be, <laughs> so J-Lo, J-Lo from the block has to do with me building my own fire. Well, kind of. She's the bling. I'm just adding like tools to my toolkit. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> but he's like, but he, well, I said, I said, who's the guest? You said his name is Buddy is here. It. Okay, it's for those okay, you on the podcast, so. Buddy is here. We'll, we'll introduce him content. properly in a little bit. So, so I was, so I'm in the UK, and here many people have wood burners, <laughs> and Cher experienced this as I was trying to learn how to build a fire. So I'm on my own this week, um, and I and it gets cold. And so I have to go and build my fire. I have to clean the fireplace. And I mean, it's a whole process, right? And the first couple of days, I was really annoyed because you're supposed to TP the pieces of wood, add a little fire starter in there. And then like, and then of course I get distracted. I got the music going. I got J-Lo going. And and then the fire goes out. And I'm like, oh, I got to put the fire back on. got to build my TP again. I mean, it's like I've wasted so many of these little sticks and I'm pretty sure my husband's really mad at me because he has to go order some more sticks from the forest. I don't know. <laughs> they come from the forest. <laughs> Poor audience. This I know, I'm sorry. Y'all, people <laughs> in the UK are, I know that they listen. They're listening. They're like, yes, I can completely relate. But they've done it for so long that they don't think about it, right? They're just pros. Yes. And I started thinking about my fire building skills. And then, of course, like I get really excited where it's going. And my father-in-law came in and had coffee with me today. I know I love him so much, Um, partly because I gave him crap about not coming to see me to have coffee when he lives down down the road. And I said, did I didn't just move a whole country to just be on my own here. So he came and had coffee with me and he he called me Sweetie Pie. And he was like, oh, Sweetie Pie. He's like, I love your fire. I'm very impressed with it. Um, and I said, I know, right? Like, it's such a good fire. He's like, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant fire. He's such a good cheerleader. <laughs> Even though it's a bit smoky. <laughs> so when you open the door, it was a bit smoky. But anyways, all that is, I'm getting to my auntie moment, okay, y'all? Please bear with me. So I started thinking about all these skills that I've learned from moving countries and starting my own business. And what I started realizing as I was building my fire, <laughs> I like this epiphany moment. I thought, oh my gosh, I don't have fear anymore about being able to sustain myself. And I said, am I scared? Yeah, of course I am. This is scary stuff, right? Moving countries, starting your own business leaving the perceived comfort of corporate America. Yeah, I'm very, very scared because it is unknown. And my own brain, Maria, likes to come out and get the better of me. And, um, but, or should I say, and I'm really excited 
about the infinite possibilities that are are before me. Like, oh my gosh, like I I don't see an end. I don't see the ceiling anymore. And it what really sparked me over the last few months is that spark of wanting to learn a new skill is so bright in me. It's so powerful. I mean, I want to learn everything, right? I want to read everything. I want to listen to all the podcasts. I want like, and I am every time I send share a new message about look at this, what I've learned. And she likes to send me things too. And she also likes to call me out because I made fun of her the other day about having fun researching HR stuff. And here yep. I am reading an article, but I told her, oh, I watched a TikTok to make it cooler. Yeah. But, but you were doing, but what were you doing though with the R word? Yep. And on, oh. top, <laughs> and on top of all this, what this has taught me, this experience has taught me patience and gratitude and really focusing my shift on what I can control and what I cannot control. So, and two, a couple of thoughts came in related to upskilling like your employees. When I think about an organization or an individual, right? I thought about two, a couple of different things. One, people in corporate may not feel that they can take on new skills. And I want to challenge or offer an opportunity for employees or individuals to take a look at their schedule and figure out an amount of time that works for them daily or weekly, or even if it's like 10 minutes a day, and you put that on your calendar and you say like upskill or a new intention that you want to pursue or a new goal that you want to do and go and read an article or watch a TED talk. I used to do that. But when I was in corporate and I, I knew I wanted to start my own business, I knew I wanted to become a coach and a consultant. I started reading articles. I started talking to people on Fridays. I would practice my coaching with Shara having cafecito at our favorite a coffee place in Sugarland, <clears throat> and and I'd like also to challenge organizations like upskill your employees, create opportunities where there's cross functional training and experiences, pay for training that is more than just functional, right? So I'm I came from the accounting world, and I always asked for training that was beyond accounting. Like I want to put put all these tools in my toolbox. So that I'm not scared and I'm not driven by fear and that I can go go and make mistakes and be comfortable with making mistakes and knowing actually this is going to be a learning opportunity. Um, I won't make that mistake again. Right. And and um, and and I can add these tools. And then the last thing and I and this is my favorite one. Teach your kids to take on a skill. Teach them to take a trade or something creative where they can eventually earn like passive income of some sort, something that they're passionate about. And our person that's on our screen right now, it's it's very similar. It has a lot to do with our, our, our guest that's on here. But teach them something that, that can be either be an outlet for them of creativity or something where they can earn passive income so they never have the fear that this is all, like this is going to sustain my life and it's going to, if I don't have it, I'm not going to have my lifestyle or I'm not going to be able to pay my bills or whatever it may be. Create this safety net. So teach them a skill in that and give them that freedom of not living in fear or and being scared is one thing, but living in fear is debilitating to you. So that's my auntie moment. I mean, I, I went real deep, didn't I? First of all, I just try to look, I just wanted to welcome the audience who missed the J-Lo hat and then also came in at, at the end when you was dropping this Super Soul Sunday on people. So I not sure where to go. I was not prepared because I was like, okay, so first of all, we can't, I knew something had changed when your face turned from J-Lo from the block to um, <laughs> the current teacher conference phase. I was like, oh, I see now. I see the current now. teacher conference. It was the current teacher conference. I was like, so let me see. So what, what did we want to talk about with my boys? I was like, oh, we are, we're serious. So I'm sitting here trying to be like not childish and think about all the things that I want to joke about while you giving us all this hot tea. First of all, y'all, that was deep. And for those of you who didn't see running back, okay, uh, but for real, Liz, that was a deep moment to come from you over there 
build not trying fire. to your house down uh, by building an appropriate fire. P.S. Please tell um, uh, 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 dad-in-law that uh, I'm so sorry that he had to walk into that smoky house and had that smoky coffee with you. But tell him that when I visit, it'll be so much better because I'm going to bring <laughs> I'm gonna bring some good coffee and without the smoke. But anyway, I'm just messing. Um, first of all, is uh, the part at the end about teaching kids uh, skills that really resonates with me. I hear so many parents talk about how important it is to them to make sure that they don't um, follow the same footsteps that they have while putting all their eggs in one basket. And I think in general, all parents are kind of trying to make sure that they are amplifying or advancing beyond where the last generation is. But this particular generation has so much access to opportunities and information. So I think that was just, for me, I took that away really strongly. Like, listen, I had a kid tell me they were buying a vending machine. I said, well, when you, when you get that vending machine, let me know if you want me to test the snacks. And as sharp as I was trying to be funny, he was like, and if you want to, you could buy them first and test them. I said, and that is a businessman. Man, talk about an entrepreneur in the making. He was quick. I was like, I can taste these now. No, he was like, and for a fee, you no, can be the taster in the brand ambassador and play, and you can share it on your Instagram. I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> I think I would have okay, you can share it on your Instagram. Wow, free marketing, right? Is, did he get advice from Riri? Right? For free marketing on the Super Bowl? I, I might have to give him a 1099 after the way he talked to me so quick. That little kid. I said, oh, let me talk to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, let's look, Buddy is sitting here just waiting for his moment. So let me let me introduce the buddy to y'all. So y'all, we got a guest today. I know y'all want to hear from us. But this guest right here is all the, the one that we be talking to. Like, you know, you just see the two of our faces and we'd be like, hey, we just go tell Buddy to do something. And then we go talk to Buddy about it. And now you about to meet Buddy. OK, so let me tell you how I know Buddy. So this is not nobody from a previous appointment, but let me just explain. So poor Buddy, your face about to be red. So that you're not watching on YouTube, you're not about to experience it. So anywho. Buddy is one of those people. So working with Buddy, right? Me, Buddy and I were not in the same department at one point. We weren't in the beginning. And really, I was the type of client that I would go to him and be like, so I have a very big idea. <laughs> Just like my buddy, everybody with the big ideas. Yeah. My budget, my budget is not as big as this idea, but I'm really got a big idea. And Buddy, and, the, and Buddy would literally be the only one just like, let me hear all the all the details. Like he's like, okay, tell me more. And I found this technology, and I found this. Oh, you said that? I heard about this. So me and him, we would just get into this moment of like ideation and ideas. And for the most part, many of them came true unless it was outside of the budget. So think like we were like, we gonna light this thing up, and we gonna have balloons, and we gonna have sound and music and a vibe and green grass. And, I mean, listen, that's all the things, right? Like we did those things. So anyway, um, one of the biggest pieces, right, about all of that is, you know, it's different when you are peer to peer and you're creating things, and you're like, okay, let's just do this crazy thing. I got signed up after all of these crazy things to be a part of a project actually leading a team. Keep in mind, I have zero skill set in AV and any of the things, creative things <laughs> that they asked me to do, but I know they're a project manager on, that my manager on this situation. So I come into the team, everybody like, okay, so what are you doing here, sis? Like, this is not your spirit. Like, this is not your skill set. What you doing over here? So I was like, let me just meet with everybody, let them know what it is that I'm tasked to do, and I'm I'm here. And so I have my meeting with Buddy, and Buddy, just cool as can be, he's like, so listen, what exactly are you doing here? Like, one. So I was like, I appreciate the honesty. Second was, uh, and then I was just like, look, I have none of your skills. Everything I need to do, I need to count on you. So how can I do it? So I came with this little idea, right? I was like, oh, and I'm thinking this and doing this. But he was like, oh, that's a good idea to it. I don't, I'm not sure if that was going to work, but how about this? <laughs> I mean, just very matter of fact, like, listen, I love your spirit and creativity. However, that's not going to work because that's not going to work the way that, that way. So anyway, but he comes with the honesty. He comes with a kind spirit, a kind heart. And well, before you get a chance to work with him, you know, in that moment when I'm in a situation where I was not the expert and I had to sit across the table and be like, listen, I'm not the person should be in this room. This person should be in the room. But he was the one who was like, I got you. I'll be prepared. I'm gonna be in that room. I'm gonna be gonna do it this way. And I would just be like, done. Like I be, I would just see him, like, you do your thing, I got your back. And I will tell you forever grateful 
for having Buddy, uh, a person who had to trust somebody without the skill set to be a champion for them, but also to be honest with me so that I could lead and be effective in what it is that we were trying to do. And I'll and, and that's how I know Buddy. I know the big smile, the great energy with all the honesty, and most importantly, a man of faith and family. Because I'll be honest with you, it was not a moment that I'd be like, buddy, what you want to? I'm like, okay, now tell me about the kids, tell me about your wife, like all in the team. Because that's how invested I am because he owns, he every space he comes in, he brings those people with him. So I want to introduce you to my, 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 and Liz, AV expert. And his name is Leo, buddy, Tyler. Ooh, from ooh, 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 Cradle Rock Entertainment, baby. <laughs> yes, okay. welcome on, buddy. Welcome. Oh, thank y'all so much. It's an honor to be on the other side of the podcast with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> How weird is it, buddy? Because we always say your name in the episodes while you're editing. <laughs> Yeah, like, oh. no, we really do. We're like, oh, yeah, but like, it's like we're talking to you like as if you're there, but you're not there, but we know that you're there. I feel like I have been there just through all the podcasts. Do you respond back? Because sometimes we get, one time Liz asked the question. <laughs> I did. To you, buddy, in mid recorded. And we're like, I don't think you're going to respond because he's not here, but maybe. <laughs> I, okay, I do be talking to y'all whenever no. y'all are done. Oh. <laughs> like, I'll be listening and I'm editing. And I'm like, oh, okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> oh, that's C, Sharon. I told Liz you. was right. Liz was I right. She did you. say he was going to answer it. She's that's like, he's thing. answering us. That's he's the answering. thing with Buddy. Like, if I could add just a little bit of how I, I met you, Buddy, is um, I knew that energy. And I always, I've said this many times on our podcast, when Sharon introduces me to someone, I, I trust them immediately because I I trust Sharon. And I know that, you know, she she she's a, a, a people person, right? <clears throat> and so she goes, Hey, just go to, go to buddy. We're in the women's network. He'll take care of you, you know, hundred percent. And it was just like your infectious energy. It's like, it's so positive that comes through, but also very, very grounded. And I just like, I just so, uh, so appreciate you on that because you're also very consistent and you show that <laughs> In your in your emails when we're like we have these ideas buddy you're like yes <laughs> and <laughs> well thank you so much he knows how to rein you in with this big old smile and you like i know i feel like i was i did right though still <laughs> <laughs> right like you still like, feel like you've accomplished something but you're also reined in and and to be yeah. honest with you like Cher and i need to be reined in sometimes all the time with yeah. our with our ideas for yeah. sure so for sure. Buddy, usually when we start our podcast with every guest, we like to, before we get to what you do, we like to obviously introduce people with who you are. And we also use the diversity wheel, which are just different dimensions that resonate with you. They might not all resonate with you, but can you walk us through a little bit of the kind of top few dimensions that really resonated with you? So whenever I looked at the diversity wheel, um, the external dimensions really, um, really popped out for me. And it was the professional, um, profession work area, the, um, the faith and spirituality area, and also the uh, appearance and dress area. Those, those were the three that really, uh, really resonated with me. You know, and it was funny that you bring, was not funny, but it's interesting that you bring those up because I didn't want to make any assumptions, but based on mm -hmm. how I know you and how you've presented yourself to me, um, I could definitely see that those are, those dimensions are something so, so personal and so dear to you because you show them all in different ways, but also together. I don't know how you do that, but it's, I don't know if you, if you understand what I'm saying, but like it, you, they're individual, you know, dimensions, but somehow you bring them all together. It's like, I always tell people, if you have your value system and you have one value that you're not paying attention to, think about how it's impacting the other values within your, within your system there. 
And, and, and you're a perfect example of what it's like to hold everything that's important to them and display that publicly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, those, those are, those are really how I want to present myself and I want to, I want to carry my faith in everything that I do. Um, so obviously I feel like people should see my faith in my work and I want to present myself in a very professional fashion. So I pay attention to how I dress and, and I try to dress accordingly to every, um, interaction that I'm going to have every working environment, whatever I'm going into, I want to dress the part. And, um, and yeah, I just, I just always want to bring my uh, best foot forward in my work. So, I mean, I, I do try to encompass all of those things whenever I do show up. Yeah. I'm yeah. I, I will tell you, you break it in the room. You don't even got to <laughs> speak it. I write it out like, that is. you know, when somebody, you be like, I'm that person, like you just have a kindred spirit with somebody where you be like, I can see the parts that the, the, the parts that are important to me, or I've seen in other people, a quality in them. And, and I, I, I never thought about the appearance part, but now I know. Cause I will say though, you've definitely been sharp. I know I get it now. <laughs> Because let me tell y'all something. So I'm giving all the hot tea. So listen, Liz and I had this big event in D.C. If you was listening to the um, episodes, you know what we talk about. If you don't, well, that's your fault. And second of all, we, I had to meet Buddy, like, by, without Liz. So Liz is, like, the technical expert, right? Like, she needs to be there all the time if things need to go right. So I met with Buddy. I was like, Buddy, Liz, got. Like, I felt the pressure. Like, I need to know how to work all this equipment. We going to D.C., right? <laughs> And Buddy was like, let's just meet up. So we met up and Buddy is like, literally just comes in. I was like, okay, first of all, I got on like sweatpants and a t-shirt. Buddy is like dressed like we about to go into a corporate meet. I was like, okay, so this how we doing at Starbucks? Like for real, like you the manager, is this your fr Starbucks? Are you franchise owner? Like that's how crazy we both looked in here while we trying to do business. So anyway, we come in there and he's just like professional talking to me like we ain't known each other for like a hundred years now. And just, that's just how he shows up. Like at any moment I could have brought any executive that I work with. I could have brought, you know, my friend from something that I do. And they would have sat in that meeting in that session with me and had a quality professional experience. And I laughed because I was like, that's what was different in that moment. Like I come to Starbucks. We just, I thought I was just coming to Starbucks to just like get some info. We was in a meeting meeting. Okay. When you bring that appearance and that professionalism, it just changes the space. And I was on, I listened to the video and audio of it. The one thing that I noticed that came out in there and I, and this is something that comes through very much. So is your care and your attention to detail and nothing is too small or too big for you to handle. And I think that's so, cause we came to you with this idea and you, you big time, right? Like you're an AV guy, like inner, you have your own company, your entertainment company, like Sharon, I like buddy. Um, yeah. So we want to try this tiny little podcast, you know, uh, we know nothing about podcasting. Right. And, you know, please help us with everything and you're like and and you made it like for me and i'm not sure i don't want to speak on your behalf but you made me feel like one i could do anything like i could do this podcast even if i didn't know the skills even if i've never done it before you were like this is such a great idea i'm so excited how can i help? and all of a sudden it ended up like we came to you for advice and then all of a sudden you became like our podcast editor <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, i mean i I um I think the biggest thing for me is everybody has a story. Everybody has a narrative that they want to share with the world. Either it's something audible or sometimes it's just a visual, like a picture or a video or whatever. And even if you're not in their world, I want to I want to help everybody see that story. I want to help everybody. Uh, be able to hear that story. And I mean, I, I know Shara's heart. I know your heart from just working with y'all as, as much as I have in the past. And I just knew that if y'all were putting your, your mind to something, if y'all were putting your heart into something, it had to be something that 
other people needed to hear. And I just knew that I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to help and elevate that as much as I could. So see how see how he roll. It's just I mean <laughs> it's the pacing. It's the pacing of the conversation. Every time Exhibit he's ready, he come ten thousand. I'd be on ten thousand. He'd be like, let me bring you the ten. And let me just tell you, see, I need this. This is how this is how he gets things done, right? Like we get things done. Okay, wait. One thing that is infectious, I have to know, buddy. You always are smiling. Like I need to understand this now, as a person who has lived, who's a, another great example of the smiles, right? I know what powers her up, but I don't know what powers you up so that you are always in this very much so pleasant, often smiling, joyful mood. Um, I mean, honestly, I just, I love life. (laughs) Um, And I feel that joy is in everything. I mean, every day you can pick your worst day and there's joy out there. There's joy in that day. It's just up to you to go out and find it or accept it and just live in that joy. Uh, a lot of times I'll wake up and I'm not feeling it, not feeling the day, but I, I fake it till I make it. I, I, I smile until I find that joy. And then I'm like, this is what I'm going to hold on to so that I can, I can feel that empowerment throughout the day. I mean, sometimes, sometimes it's just uh, a conversation that I have with my wife. Uh, sometimes it's just, um, you know, I, I go to work and I see that one employee, uh, that, that we just connect and they, they're like, man, I I did this, you know, and it's something that I helped them with. So I'm like, yes, you know, you got it. Um, but it's, it's, it's just accepting that joy and, 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 once you hold on to it, once you find it, just hold on to it and and it will get you past a lot of the dark things that are happening. Because, I mean, we live in, in a world where and, and in a time where so much is going on, so much that can just really damper our mood. And just if we focus on that, it's it's it, it's really hard to to move forward. In, in what we do. So, I, I mean, it's not that we don't think or don't address those situations, but we really need to hold on to that joy that empowers us to help those other situations better. First of all, I wanted to go ahead and get on that keyboard behind you and start doing the organ and the choir. You better in church the beat on there and talk about <laughs> your joy. <laughs> And that, you know, I love, I love hearing that from, from you, buddy. I love hearing that from you because, um, we don't get a lot of men on our podcast, mm-hmm. we need more guys. So guys sign, sign on up, Period. but it's so beautiful seeing you talk about joy and how it resonates with you and how important it is. And I loved what you said is like, nobody can take that joy from me. Understanding that it is your power and your choice to keep that joy. And I completely agree. I've been personally doing something this year where I do everything in joy and love. So when I'm making a decision or I'm going to have a difficult conversation or, um, I'm, you know, a judgment comes into my mind or something, I ask myself, I pause, I literally say, stop. Stop. Mm-hmm. Are you doing this in love? And and is this bringing you joy? And then everything that I consume. So I, I, we do a lot of social media, you know, a lot. And it's very easy to go down that path of, of having so much negativity come at you and also feeling like, oh, that person has the best life and being like the grass is greener on the other side. And in mm-hmm. reality, it's like, no, you don't know what's behind. You don't know the struggles that they're dealing with, right? It kind of takes you away from being present in your own life. And social media is a great tool. Um, That's how we market ourselves, right? And, and that's how we connect with people. 
but you have to have to have that emotional intelligence to understand like this is this is not reality it's a tool it's not real life and i need to i need to consume things that are going to bring that joy and that spark into my life so i think it's i think it's beautiful because i think you can use social media and technology and all that stuff but understanding its limits as well exactly yeah i mean social media started off as a tool to just keep in touch with your friends and keep in touch with others that weren't um weren't in in your area anymore so you know you had to i mean facebook started off in colleges so that people could stay in touch and i mean i i it's it's like you said you know it kind of it's it's this keeping up with the joneses now Mm -hmm. instead of you know what it used to be but I do, I do feel that it can be used as a great tool to, um, to not just try to keep up with the Joneses, but if you have that, like that emotional maturity, you can use that to spread joy to, to other people. I love that. You know, like, like this, this is, you know, this is what I'm doing. I'm having fun being with my kids or I'm having fun being with my wife, I'm having fun working. You can do it too. You know, that's, that's what we should be using social media for. Not just, Hey, look at what I have and you don't. Yeah. So obviously we talked about you being our AV guy and um, our podcast editor and all the wonderful things that you did. And you're also the founder, owner of Cradle Rock Entertainment. What made you create Cradle Rock Entertainment? And what was the process for selecting your name? So um, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a twofold thing as, as to why I, uh, I created it. And y'all were actually a big inspiration for that. So, um, <laughs> yes. Wait, I didn't know this. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> See, so, this is the part that, look, buddy, this is the part I left yeah. out on the recordings. You couldn't have everything that happened at Starbucks. That's what happened when you move so far away. You can't get all the tea. Yep. See? I know, I know See? we exclusive. talked a little bit about I'm going to say, it. it's, it's her exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. <laughs> so... Um, I mean, after I lost my job, uh, with COVID and I mean, I went back to gigging. I, I just, I knew I didn't want to, I, I wanted to get back into the workforce. I wanted to get back into that nine to five and have that, you know, that security that we all, uh, grab for. But at the same time, I didn't want to be, um, dependent on another uh, corporation. So I I knew I wanted to to build my own company. I wanted to build my own business. And I was, I have a lot of anxiety. <laughs> and uh, actually one time there was a podcast that, um, that you were doing, Liz, and you said that you are a recovering perfectionist with anxiety. And I was like, that's me. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm in that same boat. So it was, it was very hard to, to start something like that, to start a, a, um, a business. But whenever Shara, uh, and, and you like talk to me about the podcast and, you know, wanting to do the podcast and wanting me to edit the videos. And I was like, you know, I, I, I can do this. I can do this. And then you're like, you know, and you know what's your company name you know what it was like i'm going to put a business together i'm going to put it together and i'm going to build this up so i have that i i I just did it afraid (laughs) in a sense so y'all y'all were a huge part of that and the other part is i i i did it for my kids because growing up, I didn't have a lot of um, people around me that had their own business. Growing up, it was one of those things where um, 
you saw the the typical you go, grow up, go to school, go to college. Once you get out of college, you go to whatever your nine to five is and you live out your life. And uh, I didn't have examples of, you know, so-and-so started his own business at this age. So-and-so started his own business doing this, you know, and I want to be an example for my kids to say, you know, you get a craft, you get a skill that you love to do and you can, you can build that into a business of your own. You know, you're not limited to this company or this company and your worth is not decided by this company saying you can only do X, Y, Z, whatever you're gifting, whatever you're talented and whatever you uh, feel passionate about, you can build that up into a business, a company, uh, a sustainable resource that you can not only take care of yourself, but you can take care of your family with. So, um, so yeah, I just like y'all were a, a big influence on that and, and just leaving that legacy and that inspiration for my kids. So first of all, <clears throat> I was, I heard this story in the Starbucks. So, you know, I was <laughs> all the way in. I was like, if I cry at this Starbucks, I ain't never gonna be able to come back here. I mean, I was always like tearing up a little bit, and I was like, oh. <laughs> that's it. It took me a while to unmute my phone because that's a clear, clear, clear my, clear my throat. And buddy, I it. would not tell Liz the story. I refuse. It's the hardest. I'm so glad we finally had well, this thing. Sharon I knew that I wanted. I, Sharon knew that I wanted you on this on this mm-hmm. podcast. Like I was like. Yeah. There is something there that I want to share with the world and I want Buddy to be part of it and yes. I want Buddy to know this and now I know why. Like this, yes. what this incredible, powerful story. I'm so I'm so proud of you, Buddy, because that takes courage to not have. And I guess I didn't realize that, like I was kind of putting myself into your shoes a little bit in terms of that because I had the privilege of seeing my mom and a lot of my aunties and uncles have their own business. And so, and I was still afraid to start my own business. So I can only imagine what it would be like with somebody that didn't have that background. You know, I, I, I saw the struggles that my mom went through and I was like, I'm not doing that, but I am doing this, you know, and I had that example. Yeah. And I didn't, I guess, yeah, I hadn't realized that that was, you know, that's like my own privilege per se to say like, gosh, I knew somebody that started their business. Yeah. And shout out to Mrs. Tyler, okay? And all the (laughs) family who supported the endeavor because I'm sure in the time, everything that was going on, this was like, in a business? Because, <laughs> uh, you know, that thing in me was in the spirit. Like, okay, wait, wait, huh? we support it. Okay, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, because, right. you know, you, it takes a big community that's part of yes. your business to support it. And also, like, we send you podcast episodes, like, on a Friday evening. And we're like, hey, can we get these out on Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> right. I feel so bad. That's the one thing I will say, like, <laughs> But he would, so y'all, just so you know, the professionalism of Buddy is he will put you on a schedule. He's like, if I get it by this, he'll get you, get it back by that. But now, like the whole part of when you know somebody, you don't want to really inconvenience them. Like when you work with people you really care about, you don't want to inconvenience them by any means. So that's one of the biggest challenges of picking somebody that you know and working with. But it's also the joy, right? Because you know they're going to take care of it and they're going to give it the love and care and attention that it deserves and think of things that's going to make it better without you even having to be in a room. So that's the one thing I, I, I appreciate. Second of all, I was just, I, first of all, buddy, you shared with all this vulnerability. I was like, okay, so some time has passed and you living, okay? I got you down for living over here, okay? But I have to be messy a little bit and ask you, you have edited all of my episodes. I'm putting you on the spot. Now, you know, <laughs> heard us talk about tons of topics, but... Mm-hmm. We putting you on a spot right now. We got to know. First of all, which of us do you like most? No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just, no hats on. No, don't break no props. I didn't break props. Okay, okay, no, I'm just kidding. I was like, what do you what do you like to hear us talk about, like the topics you like us to talk about, and which one has been your favorite? No, I, I know this is probably the um, political answer, but I do love all the topics. 
that y'all have talked about. And I, I think the biggest thing I love about it is y'all are having the conversations that a lot of people won't have because one, some, some of the people are afraid or they don't know how to initiate those conversations. And then other is that some of those people, they'll never be in that room to have those conversations because of where they're at. Uh, so I, I love all the topics. I think the, my favorite topic uh, that y'all talked on was um, uh, if I can remember the title, it was, uh, and they, they say money isn't important or they say money isn't everything. Oh yes. With Enrique. Yeah. Yes. 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 That was my favorite just because um, my, like my upbringing money was the taboo topic. I mean, it was, it was the topic that started all the arguments. It was the topic that, um, pretty much brought the most pain, the most shame. And as, as I grew older, um, it was, it was my, my insecurity. That was, that was one of the things where I was like, yeah, my money is, is my conversation that I'm going to have with myself. Um, so it was money was very important to me, but I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't talk about it with anybody because that was, that was still that taboo topic. And, um, I mean, hearing, hearing that, uh, hearing what Enrique was saying and, you know, about leaving a legacy and, um, and talking about your money and, and all of that, that, that was really impactful. And, um, I, I had shared, I, I shared when I, with my wife, whenever we got married that, you know, that was an insecurity for me. So we've, we've grown through those steps, but, um, now that I'm building a business, having to talk about that with, you know, a financial advisor and, and other things. And it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, I know I need to do this. I know I need to just get out and do it afraid. But that, that episode really did help and it was impactful. So yeah, That's thank y'all. That's no. And, and thank you to Enrique too, because that is, I mean, a lot of us do have unhealthy relationships with money or no relationship with money and are very uncomfortable to talk about it. But at the end of the day, if you want to create wealth and abundance and a legacy, you have to have money and you have to take mm -hmm. care of your money too. So, <laughs> Right. And I think it's important that people get to hear that, that, you know, I think there's some stereotypes always out there about, you know, you know, maybe gender wise that men care about money or that's really important or it, but we never talk about some of the uncertainty or the fears or the pressure that that type of those stereotypes have on, on, in, in that conversation too. So I'm so glad that you are sharing like the vulnerable parts. Cause I mean, and, and, and Enrique's talked about it too, like how he talked about himself and his clients and those types of things, but we need to hear more stories to kind of break down these, these stereotypes of how people see are supposed to be and supposed to handle things. And I need to take that shoulda, woulda, coulda out of your, out of your vocabularies. I, please, mm -hmm. please y'all, if you're listening to this, please take that shoulda, woulda, coulda. Okay. Yes. Take it out. Please. Yes. So buddy, we have one last question for you. What advice would you give someone wanting to get into media? Um, I, I would say that, um, be secure in your art, be secure in your art because, um, going into media, w whether it's video or audio, you're going to go into a environment where there are a lot of critiques. There are a lot of uh, situations where um, your passion, your vision doesn't line up with the client's vision. So it's not a, it's not a critique on your art or your talent, but it's just a, 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 miscommunication with what the client wants. So a lot of times that discourages young artists because they put their worth in their art 
So you need to be secure in your art, be secure in the talent that you have and know that, you know, whenever you put your talent forward and you put your art forward, some people are going to like it. Some people are not going to like it, but it's not a reflection on the gift that you have. I'm so glad you said that out loud because when I tell you that that was one of the hardest things in the beginning when we were trying to build the decide about the podcast, it wasn't the content. It was the vulnerability of how much do we give to the world versus how much we keep to ourselves. And, 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 and it was always to that point about, you know, this is not my whole, this is not our whole identity, right? This is a part of our passion that we're seeking to explore. And, you know, we all was looking at it like, Hey, so pe people give so much of themselves in this. I'm like, they, everything is based on, you know, this, this, this space of content and sharing their, sharing this like social media or their skill with other people. And then we were just like, I don't, I don't want to give all that to the world in that way. I want to give the best parts and the parts I think is usual, but I can't have my worth tied up into it. And to your point, buddy, you know, I will never forget when we were like, Hey, you've been editing our podcast. You got any advice for us? Right. You were just like, just keep doing what you're doing. Like you can hear your passion. And then of course he was like, no, let's talk about the audio. Because <laughs> we were, we still, we still <laughs> we get that right. Get mics together. And, get get uh, you some mics. We gotta get our internet together. And please, for real. Camera too. And uh, for okay. Real. And please get don't your say it's okay because I'm tired of editing those parts. Right. Too. Get your broadband up, uh, first of all. Uh, but no, I, I, I appreciated that because, you know, Liz and I was very open. Like, we still to this day ask people, like, what do you think? Give us your feedback. And people will, you know, will share some things, but most of the time they're just like, keep being you and stay true to your craft. But at the end of the day, you know, we're used to that support. And I think that's the privilege that we have of our network and the people who support and love us who are constantly like, we believe in you. And so if this is what you want to do, it's yours. So I am so glad you shared that with people because I know so many people that come to us to talk about, they want to start a podcast. And we'd be like, let's tell you all the tea. And people are like, so you're just going to share everything with us? Yeah, yeah. we are. We are <laughs> because we're going to reach back. And yeah. Right. Yeah. And we told them to get with Buddy, by the way. We're like, okay. <laughs> if you want to get your podcast edited, please go to Crater yes. Rock Entertainment. Yes. Buddy Leo is going to treat yes. you well. We will put yes. his links on our promos and on the podcast episode and everything like that. Well, buddy, usually when we end our episodes, we have a moment of reflection, but I, I know you gave us a lot of reflection and a lot of to think about. When I listen back to the episode, I'm probably going to get all emotional again. I think what I take away from this conversation and buddy, thank you so much for your vulnerability and for your honesty as always and your kindness. It really shows through. And I just think if we had a little bit more of that in the world, it would be even a better place to live in and more so for our kids to like what a legacy you're creating, not just in your business, but in, in your care. Like if, if, if your little kids are going to see you, you treating your clients with so much care and kindness, they're like, I know exactly how my, how, how my dad did that. And I'm going to, I'm going to carry that through because those are the behaviors that are going to carry them through for years to come. So that's my reflection. Sherry, you want to add in anything? I mean, y'all so deep. I was just going to say a little jokey joke. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so listen, I, I just want to say, it's plenty of things I could say, but I just want to be like, listen, I am just in such gratitude because when I, I jokingly talk about crazy ideas, but being with the people who give you space with for your crazy ideas, whatever crazy means, right? It could be just the outlandish of things. And to, for you to have held space for me, not just professionally, but now personally with this journey, it means so much for me. And I want to just share that with, I mean, I share that similar with Liz, but it's such a unique experience when you can be vulnerable and share the things that really, really matter to you and that you're able to have hold space for a person, even if you're like, okay, I'm just here to support and show support and kindness and be there, and, you know, do my part that I can do. I, it means so much to me. And I just want to honor not just you, but everybody who has given people that space because that's the journey, right? The journey is from like to your, to the point of like being fearful for it to be supported by, it. you know what I mean? Like 
it's such a journey. So I, I just want to say shout out to all those people who do that and do that, not just for us, but just doing that for people. And if you can't think of the last time you did it, maybe you should be thinking about like, how can I be that that's a the whole space for somebody who is trying to do something that hasn't been done so that it could become possible. So buddy, what you got for us? Uh, I just, just to reiterate, just, stay true to yourself. I mean, I, I remember I was, I was listening to a video on YouTube and it was this artist that I, I, I really look up to. And he said that do, do not fear creating your, your art. Do not fear putting it out there because there are, there are so many people on the planet there's at least one more person that's going to like what you put out there. That's, that's, that's incredible. I say that all the time, whenever I'm, I'm, I'm insecure about my coaching. I said, there's like a, how many people, 7 billion, 8 billion people in the world. I'm like, there's somebody that's going to be using my, my, my skill sets. Well, buddy, yeah. thank you so, so much for yeah. honoring us with your presence, for being so vulnerable and sharing your story with us. Y'all, go get your podcast uh, edits by Buddy. Go get all your entertainment needs yeah. by Buddy, please. Um, let's create legacy and wealth for this guy. Thank you very much. And uh, please check out this episode. Go to morethanwordspodcast.com. All of our episodes are now on our website. They are there. So you can go there. Please subscribe so that you can hear about when a new episode's coming on. Um, if we have any events going on, we're going to start hosting some virtual gatherings. Yeah. Merchandise come on. Merch. But you need to get on our website. Go yes. and subscribe. Like Buddy. and share. Tell your friends. Tell your yes. dad. Tell J Lo. Okay. Thank you. Hello. But wait, buddy, do you have anything that you need to share with the audience before we um get done? Um check out my website, Cradle Rock E N T M T um dot com. And we have A V rentals, we do post production. Um, we also do consulting, so yeah, contact us, give us a shout out and, uh, we'll help you out. We want to partner with you. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. <laughs>